Derek, and then, yes. Uh, we kind of talked about this other day, just kind of to piggyback off her question. What are the pros and cons of, one, going public, or investing in a company that's public or private? Like, what are some of the benefits? Or yeah, 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 so, so, all right, so question number one, what's the, what are the pros and cons of going public? Pros is you have, you have a lot of money, right? You get like access to capital, right? So you you reach a point where you don't you know you don't want to raise privately. You want to actually go public, and it's great. So you get a ton of money if you are a founder or you have ownership percentage in a company, right? Uh, another pro would be you have you have almost like free marketing and publicity, right? Because if you trade it, your ticker symbol is on CNN every day or you know on CNBC. Mm -hmm. So you get that publicity. You get people can like read about you, we can invest in you, it can provide that, you know, you know, which you, you may not know a company, then you'd see them on CNBC, and then all of a sudden then you want to buy more of their you know, goods and services. Um, cons are you have to disclose everything, right? If you are, if, 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 you're, an, if you're an investor or if you are uh, the owner or founder of a company that went public, you have to disclose everything, and that's not necessarily the best thing you everything can do. About the company. Yeah, uh, yeah. Even even yourself. Because, Sometimes even yeah. you, uh -huh. because if you are the one that owns the majority of that company, they want to know as much about you as possible. So, you know, if there are things that you don't really want disclosed, yep. find a very good way to hide them. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, and just and don't go public. I'll give you an example. So we work right. So we work is going public. They filed their S one. Um, the the founder bought the trademark to the Wii company and sold it to the, his company for like $5.9 million. And he had to disclose that. And so, so, and so my, I was bad. like, what? All right, you just, all right, you, you know, well, what really, not what you just like finessed the whole, everybody, everybody, just, you know, that's $6 million. Moreover, he's, he was buying properties personally, leasing them to his company. So like that all went out because he started he wanted to go public, right? So you gotta disclose everything you've been doing. And and it can look shady, it can like see the price. So you know, so you gotta be careful with that. That's the been you know, that's that's the the, the, the biggest con of uh, of going public. And then it's just transactionally expensive, right? It's just cumbersome. You have to comply with the SEC, you gotta do all these reports, you gotta like uh, uh, file uh, uh, ten Qs, which are quarterly reports, and it's just like expensive but in return you get a bag so it would be but you don't have any privacy right so um and then your second question was investing in a private company versus public right the yeah. pros and cons uh, pro pros of investing privately is no one has to know what you're investing in so you can be you know you can be uh, a lot of like Public officials can invest in companies and they don't have to necessarily disclose it because it's not public, right? So you can invest in the cannabis industry, right? And be a public official and not really have to disclose where you're investing because, um, you know, it's private, right? And so but no you, one knows where your money is. And but you not. still have to have a certain level of liquidity in order to potentially invest. In a private company? In a private company. So a private company, so if I started a company tomorrow mm -hmm. selling, I don't know, selling red wine glasses, mm -hmm. that can be private, and you can invest, and, okay. or, or, Fair or a homeless person can invest, you know, $10. Okay, so, all right. I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, so yeah, you don't really need any liquidity for a private company or a public company, it really just depends on. Okay. Now, if you want to invest, you know, in, uh, in WeWork, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they value it at, $47 billion, mm -hmm. you need a bag right. to get in there. Right. So that's where the... Uh, so it depends on the company. The com exactly. It yep. depends on the company. Mm -hmm. Who does the company, who does the valuation of the company? Is that an actual appraiser that the company? Investment or banks. They value the company based on their... Uh, future, future cash flows. Mm -hmm. So, so, all right, so this is, a, all right, so, this is a tangent here. All right, so, valuation is based on your present value, which is, which consists of the assets you have, right, uh, and all of your future cash flows. They take, so let's say you're projected to grow 20% year over year, they take that number and they discount it back to the present, the future, future cash flows to the present, uh, because money is worth more today than it is tomorrow, right? And so let's say, you know, you're growing 20% for the next 10 years, uh, the dollar 10 years from now is, you know, only worth 60%, 60 cents or something like that. So they add all those up and then they give you a nice 
whole number, and that's the valuation. A lot of it's based on, uh, we, we, we call them WAGs, wild ass guesses. <laughs> I was gonna say, future projections. Yeah, future. So it's like, so it's really, you know, oh, you know, we think that, you know, it's gonna grow 20% and at this, and so it's, it's an art more than a science. And depending on who you are, so as consultants, we actually have to value, you know, value companies, banks value companies, uh, build Excel models, you, can, you know, I can do it pretty quickly. It's not terribly hard if it's public, you know, the information is all available. Um, but yeah, but so you try to accurately value it if you can. It's all, you know, it's no one's, it's not perfect. It's an, again, it's an art, not necessarily a science. Um, but. Brianna, I have a question. Yeah, question, yes. Okay, um, so my question is, okay, so I know there's an IPO and then there's APO and then there's shelving. Um, hey, what's an APO? APO is an additional public offering. Where, oh, you mean like selling more shares? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So with the APO and shelving, like, what's the biggest what, difference? What's shielding? Shielding, shielding. Uh, it's something, that's why I'm trying to get clarity. Shielding? Um, it's something that, like, uh, if a company goes public, they can post, like, a series, like, a bunch of shares into the market at once. Mm -hmm. um, because I know you have to report it, like, every three years, just depending on if you're a, uh, uh, I think it was a term. Like, publicly traded or something? A company that's, like, have a lot of assets I mean, whatever mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to figure out if I mean, is it uh, that sounds like that sounds like uh, uh, in the financial industry right like if they have a lot of AUM assets under management that may be a financial uh, particular financial segment sector um, as far as uh, IPOs APOs APOs I believe it's just, just like selling additional shares so if I only sold so instead of 75% I sold you know 30% and I want to sell it more you can always do that because companies also buy back shares right because you buy back shares, that means if there's less shares in a the pot, then that means your price goes up and it's just a lot of, so you can kind of game the system. Then you have like dividends that you can share, you know, you can, you can, you can um, deploy that will make your share price go up. It's a lot of gaming uh, for share prices especially. So uh, I, I would say, well, I would caution you guys one thing, a share price, a high share price does not mean that a company's great. Because yeah, it, it doesn't mean, so if you see a company that has a $120 share price versus mm -hmm. like a $5 share price, doesn't mean 120 company, the 120 dollar share price is better at all. Like, be, be, so what would you look at? The, 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 number of, no, the, the number of shares outstanding mm -hmm. uh, and the market cap. And the market cap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the market cap is the, the, the price per share times the number of shares. Mm -hmm. So you can, have, you can have a market cap of like a billion dollars, like two different companies, right? Company A, company B, both market caps with a billion dollars. Company A is trading at $100, company B is trading at 15 and just because they have different shares outstanding, that's all. It's all, it's all corporate finance and they do it on purpose and they, they get game in, so just be, be careful not to get fallen into that trap. Like, oh, this company's better because, it's, like, no, I mean, it's better. And uh, so, and, and uh, when, when, when you're, if you're trading or, even if you're not trading, if you're investing, the, I, what I learned is a company, uh, 15 doubles faster than 100. Right, so you can you can get a hundred percent return. Uh, Fifteen can go to thirty. Right. You know, faster Quaker, than hundred can go, to, can go 200. to 200. Right, mm -hmm. so that, so like yeah. look out for that. But then, typically like lower low like under ten dollars. If stocks are trading under ten dollars, it's called small cap by, by and large. Mm -hmm. Those are a little riskier. Um, but you know anything over twenty thirty bucks to like you know. But you look at a company like, I think Uber, who they're price, their share price on their stock fluctuates anywhere between $21 to sometimes as much as like 40 mm -hmm. at best. Mm -hmm. So there, but if you look at their market cap, their market cap, I feel like is like 4 billion, I think. More, it should be more than that. Yeah. I, I mean, it's an it's exceptionally high, yeah, yeah, high yeah, market yeah, cap. Yeah, yeah. So yes, the stock value, you can say, oh, the share price has gone down, but their market cap right, is still so, good. Exactly. So, you can say, okay, this company is fairly stable for me to invest in, even though it's not like $100 a share like Beyond Meat was like three weeks ago. Right. So a high market cap is good. It's good. Uh, it, 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 well, well, it yeah. gives you an, it can give you a, an inkling in and terms of stability. Of size, and, right, typically bigger companies are more stable, mm -hmm. by and large. So, so a market cap is how much the company's worth? 
Uh-oh. That's all it is. And so it's, it's like, yes, it's like how much, uh-huh. if you were to sell a company tomorrow, how much would you sell it for? And it's just all the stocks, all the shares outstanding times um, the t- times the uh, number of shares minus cash. So look at the, the market cap for a company like Google, which is falls under like the alphabet corporation. Yeah. Why it's called the alphabet corporation, I have no idea. They changed it because they wanted to, um, uh, they have so many different holdings and they, it wasn't just Google, they had the autonomous cars, they had like artificial intelligence, it was different divisions. And That's just <laughs> but, yeah. but it's a thousand dollars a share, right. but look at the market cap. Yeah, 770 billion. Right. Yeah. Right. So they're both high, but what you care about, there might be a company that's like six hundred or seven hundred billion dollars, but their share price might be forty dollars a share. Right, right. Okay. Yes. And then the other thing you said was um there was something else you said, market cap and how many shares were, were sold? Shares outstanding. Shares outstanding. Where do you find that information? Uh, Yahoo Finance, Google Finance, um, pretty much, it's, it's, it's all public. Every, every 10K, every 10K. Every, don't have a lot available, that's a good thing, or what if you got? Uh, so, it, you can't look at this stuff in a vacuum. You have to consider everything, right? So, does that stock have dividends? How much of the dividends? How long have they had a dividend? Have they ever like retracted a dividend? Right, so things like that. You have to look at um, uh, where it's been trending. Right, is the stock on, has it been rising for the past five years? Was it in decline? Uh, you have to look at uh, whether you're buying in at the all-time high or all-time low. You have to look at the competition. So there's a lot you have to look at. Which is why I advise not necessarily buying individual stocks, but buying ETFs, which is exchange-traded funds, which is like an index fund. Uh, it's, basically, it's the same thing as, as an index fund. So you want to buy the, an aggregate of stocks. So if you say, I like autonomous cars, or I, I like uh, mm-hmm. you know um, Ubers, or you know mm-hmm. the, 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 whatever the, yeah, mm-hmm. the technology, yeah, right? So technology stocks, you can buy a basket of those stocks. So therefore, you're not necessarily you know you don't have you're not investing in one stock. You're investing in the entire. You're not industry investing in just sector. Uber or just yeah, Lyft yeah, yeah, or yeah. just. Whoever yeah, else be, they yeah, are. because Uber, Uber can run somebody can run somebody over, you know, and then the stock market falls, you know, like crazy, Which and then they can never I recover. Is, and then I think Lyft that can happened like, to Lyft. Lyft happened, had one of their like non-people driving cars hit a woman yep. in Arizona some years back, and then their stock value dropped because they were like, "Oh, you're killing people." Yep. But it, <laughs> but if you buy something that's like an ETF, you, you essentially get more bang for your buck. But right. all of these things that you know DK is mentioning are things where if you look at when you buy a car or you buy a piece of property, you don't just look at one thing. I don't look at, oh, I like the kitchen. I look at, okay, so what's the neighborhood? What's the school district? What's the crime rate? Um, what are people selling their houses for in that neighborhood? So I can look at, is this an area where yep. I can gain a yep. profit? Yep. So these are all attributes that give you more information to know, is this something that you want to invest in? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, I don't, I don't buy a lot of private stocks. I, I mostly buy the market because that's a, a large, right. diverse pool. Yep. 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 Yes, yeah, it, yes. Yeah, because- you can, yeah. You, you can. can. Because think about like, so Lyft, Lyft hit somebody, right? So people sold Lyft, what are they going to buy? They're going to buy Uber. Right. So, <laughs> so Lyft went down, Uber went up. But mm-hmm. if you have a basket, you're good. You're like, you're, you're, you're like, you know, even. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's called hedging. You hedge your hedge your Right. Mm-hmm. Vanguard, mm-hmm. Vanguard yep. Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity. So Vanguard is really nice with ETFs just because their um, the price for them is it's, it's something lower. about is the price for them is lower is lower than like any other ETF. Like they're known for that. They're known for being cheap. Vanguard's more like long term investing. Exactly. And like four hundred one k your four hundred one k is probably like in a Vanguard account or something mm-hmm. like that. So. Yeah, which they, they, they can say, okay, hey, our fees are lower, so invest in us directly. It's like I know one of the hospitals around here, McNeil, their 401k, all their investment accounts that they set Vanguard. up with all their employees is all through Vanguard. Yep. Such a large mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Now, I think you're talking about the market. What is it called? The market? What is it? Cap. Cap. Or cap. Mm -hmm. Now, that includes the, what it, the company is worth, right? Mm -hmm. So, that includes like any outstanding loans, too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you don't know that $4 billion. Like right, which is why oh, you have. You do. You can. You can. You can, you look, can, you can look at it. You can look at it. Yeah, you can look at it. Right, but that's why it's just one piece of information. It's so it's like, oh, okay, the market cap is high. All right, so the neighborhood is good, but do they have a lot of crime? Because that's going to drop my property value. So do I really want to buy that real estate? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's so, why so it's like you have your market cap, then you have like your enterprise value, which is like your your market cap, you know, minus net. Net debt, net, okay. net cash, okay. so yeah. Cash. So, mm -hmm. which right. still you don't know where it's gonna go. Oh, oh, you never know the future. That's the thing. Yeah, you, you, you no, didn't I don't know. Right. That's why I don't understand how hedge funds work. Well, that's they, they, they. Are they they're, they're, like, are they creating some of the things? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes. I mean, yeah. it depends. It depends. There you it go. Depends. It depends. <laughs> you know, it, it, uh, you know, uh, the good ones. <laughs> They find a trend, they have a proprietary system, and they have AI and robots build it out and trade automatically, and you know, they're getting 15%, 20%. If you can do that, you'll be, again, you'll be a billionaire tomorrow. But it's very hard to do that every single year. It's, it's extremely hard. So there are times when you win, and there are times when you lose, right. and when you lose, sometimes it hurts your soul a little, right. and you cry, and there's like a thug tear, but there are times when you win, and then you win so big, you forget that you lost like last year, and right. you had that tear. Right. Which is like the recession coming up, right? right. So mm -hmm. everyone forgets about 2008, and you're like, oh, it's fine, and just like, you know, what, what, what caused the housing crash, what caused the crash was the housing market, you know, CMBS's credit mortgage, or CMBS's credit mortgage backed securities, they're back on, they're doing the same thing. Like, oh, so right. you look at, we'll use, since we're in the wonderful yeah, right. city of Chicago right now, if you look at, you pick a neighborhood and you look at their houses, and Javon, I was talking to you about this like before the meeting, it's like, you'll look at one property and we'll say it's in the River North area. Say it was for like 800 grand. Now all of a sudden it's, they're selling it for 750. And then it's like, you look at it another week and now it's, 745 what you're noticing in all these neighborhoods around the city even like the gold coast and river north areas that are higher that the property value is dropping so it gives you an idea of what's coming and what what the yep. market is doing and it's like oh so is this going to be another crash coming up soon it, it always is it, because that's it's capitalism like you have right. peaks and troughs and it's just the way it is. Well, we know there's not going to be any cuts in our like. Right. Right. <laughs> we don't. We don't even know that. <laughs> we don't know that. Yeah. Our, our yeah. president is fickle. <laughs> yes. Like a small child. Oh, I'm sorry. I said that out loud. We don't know. We don't know. What we, we do know is that, what I can tell you for sure, the trade war is definitely going to impact us a lot more than we realize. Right. We being like the general public, so, you know, the numbers I'm seeing, anytime you see the Federal Reserve, uh, they just said something today or yesterday, I said, uh, you know, we're prepared to give economic stimulus. That means that we're prepared to inject capital into the markets to make sure that credit. Mm -hmm. Right, so, and I don't know if you guys saw this, but this is why I like reading things every morning. You know, you, I, you know the Fed said, hey, this was a couple weeks ago, we're mm -hmm. going to lower interest rates. And then I was like, why, did, why are you doing, like, what, what's going, every, the job market's at all time, you know, unemployment's at all time low, um, you know, the stock market's high, what, what, you know, yeah, we're doing trade mm -hmm. work, like, what's, next day, mm -hmm. Trump said, oh, we know we're, we're imposing more, more cuts, and that's, yeah. they know, they know, they know. Right. Right. They know. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you want to be, you still want it to invest, right? But you want to invest in things that will uh, make you money during a downturn. Because you, you're always going to have cycles, going to be downturns, going to be upturn. You know, hopefully this won't be like a, the recession of 2008. I think it'd be closer to the recession we had like in the late 80s, mm -hmm. which was because in the late 80s, you know, unemployment yeah. was low. Very similar market conditions were, you know, were, 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 were there. It's, and it wasn't a recession. It was like a recession, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like 2008 where everything just kind of went to hell. It was like, oh, okay, stocks price, you know, st the stock market corrected, the bubbles burst, uh, you know, and then we leveled off and then something else came and then we went back up, so. But the one thing I will say is that if you look at the market trend from when we had the Great Depression, long before any of us were here, 
the market always goes up. So even when it dips, it's still going up. So understand that even when you you may potentially lose, you are not long term. You're yeah. not losing from a long term perspective. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and that, that's correct. And it historically it goes up to about 11%, 11, 12%. Mm -hmm. like, but what, so I read something recently, that number depends on when you get in. Yeah. So if you get in at an awesome high, you know, versus if you get in in 2008, a 2008 person, their returns are way higher. Re yes. But you know, you're they still getting, really you know, you still will go, still will go up, <laughs> but you want to make, you know, you, know, you want to make sure you're getting in. Right. Right. Exactly. So exactly. Is, uh, stay or session hit, so we should like buy up stuff. And then if you're in already, you should shouldn't be selling, right? Why does anybody sell? Because you're scared. Fear, 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 fear and greed. Fear, fear, and, fear and greed. greed. Like literally, yeah. those are the two. Things. And also because so. Let's say tomorrow, I think the stock market went down 600 points today, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. tomorrow goes down another 800, right? And so next week goes down 1,000. You're like, okay, so let's, let's go buy. It can't go no lower. It goes down 2,000. And so now it goes down close to like 500. Like it goes like almost hit zero. Y'all like, I should probably sell. <laughs> but that's when you just perfect time to buy. So it's because it's, it's your real money, exactly. Mm -hmm. But in reality, people do the exact opposite. They buy high and sell low. Because they buy high, oh, Beyond Meat is doing hundred dollars. Let me get in there. Now it's back down to forty or something right. crazy, right? So you right. bought you bought high, and now you're scared. And now you're gonna sell low. Exactly. So that, but no one, not many people have the temperament to buy low, because when you buy low, that means that not everybody's in it. That means you're 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 you're, you're the lone man. Right. <laughs> but, that, but that's what but that's where you make your money. Yeah, yeah Canary. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In a guy in the mine or Canadian mine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a millionaire teacher said um, this book. Hmm? I'm sure you've read it, but it's <laughs> <laughs> um, they literally said that when there is a sale at a retail place, mm -hmm. you go in and you it's a frenzy, right? I mm -hmm. mean, it's ten percent, like or say ninety percent off, yep. whatever. Mm -hmm. You in there buying, right? yep. buying. That's the same thing as the stock market. So that looking at it that way may help me to realize, okay, you know, don't right. go, go right. putting it in But I think the, the fear comes in because most of us, because we are the first generation in our family to have a little bit, you, you get this it. emotional connection, which you're like, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna lose it. And what the problem is, is that from a generational perspective, we really haven't been taught how to invest in essentially kind of gamble our money for financial growth. We've always been taught, we, we never had it to gamble, right, and I we've mean, always exactly. been taught to save, but we don't know how to save and for grow. growth. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. And so that's what, what we're trying to do. So yeah, you're absolutely right. When it starts dropping, that's when you, you buy, but you buy only for the companies that you can see based off of Industries. Those information, the things that are happening with the industry, the market cap, for example, things like that. Mm -hmm. So you can get an idea of does this company have an opportunity to potentially recover from whatever their loss. If you buy for someone that's dying a slow death and that they are going to die, oh yeah, then yeah, bankrupt. Concern is individual stocks versus going straight index funds. Correct. So I don't play too much. Right. But but an index fund won't. Won't give you a hundred percent return. It's not. It, but 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 but, but it, exactly. No, <laughs> and, and, and that's the point. No, and, that, and that's the point. Yeah. And, 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 but that but that's why you have uh, 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 specific allocations, right? You have like maybe you have eighty percent. You know it, 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 exactly. And right. then and you play with five or ten. That five that five or ten you may put in Beyond Meat. Right. And that may go. You know, that may be the next Coca Cola. Who knows? Right. We, we don't. We just don't know. So that's why it's like, if you look at my portfolio, most of it is ETFs, but yep. I've got my 10 to 15% yeah. so, so like, that is like, let me get a right, little right. Litecoin. Right. Let me get a little right. beyond me. Because if, if it goes to zero, you're not zoom. gonna, you know, it won't bankrupt you. You're not gonna, right. you know, you're not gonna be crying, you know. Yeah. Right. 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 Exactly. Let's go to questions we have on the, uh, on businesses and IPOs and this, the market. Yeah. Oh, come on. So I have, I have this business mm -hmm. and I'm like, 
I don't really know what to do with it right now. So I spoke with, I don't know who, what he was. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. I'm afraid. <laughs> trying to figure out what it was worth, you know, going through evaluation. Yep. Evaluation, right? And then he was like, you know what you should do? You should get this loan for one, two million dollars. He's mm -hmm. like, hmm? So well, what do you mean? So that's why I kinda asked that question about mm -hmm. you know the valuation of your company being a certain amount and that includes the loans. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if he was trying to set it up, but as soon as he said that we didn't speak anymore. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me mm -hmm. why I could take out a loan and then try to turn around and sell this to you. Mm -hmm. So, you have anything on that or was he just a scam artist? Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Mm -hmm. he, he may have been. So, I'm going to drink my wine. So, the way okay. that works is if you have a healthy company and there's potential to grow, debt is not necessarily bad. So I don't. I need more facts to understand what you know what he was doing, and we can talk offline about that. You know, say right but like, debt can be good because if you're now if you're growing and again you need, you need that food, need that money, you may need that million dollars right to grow and buy products and buy needed. assets. It wasn't needed at all. So you know I don't know then why I don't I don't know why anyone I would never really if, I wouldn't advise you to get a million dollars just just off GP. That <laughs> sounds. <laughs> Speaking as, as the non-lawyer yeah. in the dining <laughs> duo, that sounds super suspect. Uh, <laughs> sound a little sketch. So speaking of, how do you avoid like these Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> Drink my wine. Any, any, time, any, any, any time that someone tells you you have to pay them to manage your money or to sell a product, you don't really want to do that. Now, if, now, if, you, if someone tells you, hey, pay me to help you manage your company or to help you grow your company, that's different than someone saying, hey, pay me to buy a product for you to sell at a higher margin. Because you can just do that. You can go call, you can, you can go call corporate headquarters at, 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 I don't know, at any company mm -hmm. and say, hey, I want to buy in bulk. You know, I want to be a wholesaler. So you're just selling wholesale, all right? Product or sell you something at wholesale price. If you then go and buy and to buy it, sell it to your friends at a higher price, probably a Ponzi scheme. Because you can go right now to Alibaba and go and buy, I don't know, uh, some... You can buy all the jars, all the bottles, some, some wine all the shirts. glasses for 10 cents, you know? Huh? Every time I go to the site, it looks so They're no, no, it's, actually... No, it's, it's legit. No, it's legit. It's legit. It's legit. Yeah, they're, 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 they're real. Now, I don't know the quality of the rice. Now, you may be <laughs> getting some plastic, but... The plastic works. <laughs> But you know, <laughs> but yeah, those are the red, the red flags when people are like, "Hey, it's a great idea, great investments." People trying to fast talk you and slick talk you, and only for like five thousand dollars, you know, you get your first installment and your first batch, and you go sell it. Don't no 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 no. Cause you, you, you. Yeah. yeah yeah so. <laughs> What, what other questions y'all got? Anything else? What time is it? Okay. Yep. 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 Why is, is there a, like a thing that you would recommend for uh, using funds for the LLC? Like a bank? Yeah. For I, very small. I mean, I personally use Bank of America. I like their okay. their, 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 their products. Yeah. Yeah, I like Bank of America. I mean, it just depends on what you want. The Bank of America, they, ha they have a uh, pretty low, low, low minimums. Uh, Chase has low minimums too, so Chase is Bank of America. Mm -hmm. They're nationally recognized. They're known. I would, yeah. I would use one of those too. Yeah. yeah. Use, use one of those too. I, I set up use. my corp at um, Chase. So, and I, I literally only picked Chase because they were close. Because part of it is mm -hmm. that I looked at was what banks are easily accessible for me as well yeah, yeah. And, and I was anywhere like, anywhere yeah right yeah. and because depending on what banking, what state you're in depends on how you can get get to your bank so it's like i was on the east coast i had wells fargo for my personal stuff well the closest wells fargo Where's is like a hot 40 minutes right. away right. Chase is down the street. I'm gonna go to yeah. Chase. Hi, Chase. As I can see, their bright lights in the distance right now. Right. Mm -hmm. you have a question, D? Uh, Do you guys have any questions? Any other? Or 
We can talk. We, we can talk offline too. So you got. Yeah. We, we can drink more we, wine. Like, I was gonna say we're not gonna like, kick you, know. you out. Though I, I think I may we, 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 we underestimate we the 11, wine. So. I promise next time I will do better. <laughs> we got. We got some more. We got some, we got some more here. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try to be, I try to be bountiful with what we got. <laughs> well, I hope this was helpful for everyone, and you got some questions answered, and you know, can meet some people yes. and have fun. So that was it. Thank you guys for coming. The next meeting will be September 27th. I'll be putting out kind of like an event, bright, and then I'll be posting in our group. If you guys have friends that want to come and things like that. Everyone is invited. You do not need yeah. an invite. Just more the merrier. Yeah. And, and whatever you guys want to talk about, any questions? Like we we we, you know, we try to field questions and see what's mm -hmm. what's the sentiment. Maybe we may talk about the recession next month. We may talk about I don't know like Stop debt. Bonds, stuff, you know why whatever. You yeah. Need bonds. Yeah. So you know, no whatever you guys want to talk about, you do. hit us up. Um, <laughs> would you all be interested in a newsletter? What's something we're thinking about is like doing like yeah. a newsletter like once a month for like you know, stocks. And, so, okay. A blog. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, I, have a, I, have a, I have a blog. Yeah. I have a blog right mm -hmm. now. I can. I can. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah We're yeah. both on Instagram. Yeah, I, have, so I, have, you can I have an Instagram, us. and I have a, um, mm -hmm. a blog. Okay. I'm not super active on the blog, but I can be. I plan on writing a lot more articles um, next like next month or two. So. Even if you can kind of view what you did tonight. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you, you talked about like seven things that you read. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the who? Oh yeah, if you guys are on Instagram, um, Mr. Underscore DK, so M R Underscore DK Smith, that's me, and I, I talk about, I, I do the videos and yeah, the I videos are stuff. actually yeah. very good because he he meets with some of the people that he used to work with when he was on Wall Street. We talk about different issues like that. Oh, M M R <laughs> Underscore DK Smith, and that's on Instagram, and then. Uh, the YouTube channel is like in the in my bio. The link's in the bio, I think. So you can just click on that and get to one of my videos. And I talk like longer sessions. So yeah, I, I talk with my friends on Wall Street. We talk about like some like real life things and talk about you know uh, finance. Uh, it's just like I don't know general advice general and stuff. Bis small business yeah. growth yeah. and how you do that. Yeah, um, I, yeah I do that like. Yep. Yeah, I, yep. I do that like uh, that's kind of like on the, you know on the side just to just to help everyone and then. Uh, I run a law firm. I have my own law firm and my own mm -hmm. management consulting firm and strategy advisory firm. So that's what my profession I do now. Well, I learned a lot. Good. 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 So definitely won't barrage you all with emails because I'm no, not about that know. email life. <laughs> I don't enough. believe in doing that with people. So drink some more wine and Please. I'll be around for more yes. questions. Thank you guys for coming. Please eat more of Celeste's wonderful food. I know I am. I know, right? <laughs>